What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Barefoot Garage. Today we're building a powered trailer dolly so I can get that car hauler out of the driveway and make room for more projects. All right guys, here's what we're dealing with with the trailer. There's the gate to my driveway, goes out to the street, that's where my truck and other cars go. If we turn around, you can see this is leading up to my garage. And my trailer typically sits here or here. If it's on this side, it blocks the garage and the Porsche can't get out. If it's on this side, it's very tight to get through here and I can't put another car in there. So all of this goal was to be able to free up all my driveway for activities, working, and access to drive a car in here or around in this side. So let's take a look at where the trailer needs to live. All right, this is where the trailer needs to be parked and I've already got it there. Now let's find out how we made this happen. So I've tried a couple of different things to get the trailer out of the driveway and over here. I've tried a couple different spots in the yard. I used my Rancher 350, not strong enough. I tried a hand dolly, a really nice one, not strong enough. And a powered trailer dolly is just uh, too much money. So I decided I would build one. I've seen some DIYs on YouTube. So let's take a look at the powered trailer dolly that I built for under 250 bucks. Here's what you need to build your trailer dolly. Sprockets for the drive and for the axle, some chain, a trailer ball. That's a two and five sixteenth. That's what my trailer is. I'm gonna use pillow blocks for the axle because I just want to. You can just drill a five eighths hole and run with it. A winch, this is a Badlands 2000 pound winch from Harbor Freight, it's 60 bucks and they're awesome. Some way to hook up the winch to a battery. I'm not gonna hardwire it, I'm gonna use these clips. I've got two drive wheels. These are, I think rated at 600 pounds each. They're pneumatic tires, uh, just, basic Harbor Freight stuff, and a big swivel wheel. I went with nice pneumatic wheels because I do want to be able to take this thing off road. Now, let's get into it. So last thing you're gonna need is some metal. I'm gonna weld it together, you could bolt it together. There's a variety of ways you could put this together, but I've got tons of scrap around. I could probably use it without buying any metal, but if I need to get some, or if I use some of the uh, full sticks that I have just kind of on hand, uh, I'll make sure that to notate that for you guys below. So use whatever you have, and uh, I'll generally show you how I'm gonna put it together, and then we'll give it a test. We're into our first step. I have th four pieces of 18 inch angle iron. It's one and a half by two inch. I basically cut this to the width that holds a deep cycle battery. So you could just set the battery in there. It doesn't have to be strapped down. And I have drilled four holes for my pillow blocks. Uh, I just put some tape on here to kind of hold the wheels in while I'm getting everything mocked up. Uh, these are super nice. They have a Zerk fitting, they have a jam nut. Uh, eventually we're going to get our sprocket here in the middle, but for now I'm just kind of getting the cart together and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, pretty simple deal. We're going to get that swivel wheel attached next over here by my hand and then we'll see about putting some power to it. All right, welcome to BattleBots. I mean, trailer mover. So we're on our, what I would call probably the second or third step here. I showed you guys the frame I did, just those four pieces of 18, the pillow blocks down there, the axle. And I've made essentially kind of like a little gooseneck attachment here uh, for my swivel wheel. I had to space it out a little further than I wanted to to make sure that the swivel clears. Um, it's just clamped in place right now. I was going to weld it, but I think I'll bolt it because that seems a little bit more right. So in case everything ever happens, we'll make sure that that's right. Probably need to trim this ear right there. Make sure we got full range of motion, but uh, yep, that's what we're looking like. Uh, so at this point now, we need to kind of figure out where the winch is going to sit, uh, how big that sprocket is going to be over here in the middle, and uh, probably need to start thinking about a handle. I will probably base a handle off here and come up to a pretty comfortable standing height. That's where I'll probably just raid my scrap bin. I don't really want to make that out of angle iron. Maybe I'll put some handlebars on it, something cool like that. So uh, let's work on the winch mount and go from there.
on to the next step. You can see uh, we actually had to make a new front little gooseneck part for the wheel because when you swivel it, it didn't go all the way around, which now it does. So I've also just started the winch mount, um, just a piece of flat plate here so we can drive straight down to that sprocket. Uh, we will gusset this in this direction, still have access to uh, the truck to freewheel it here. I've also made the bridge for the ball hitch. So it's just loosely in here, probably needs some brace work in both directions here, but uh, that's what we're looking at. It rolls under its own power now. So our next step is gonna be to get a handle on it and start thinking about getting the wheel driven. All right, we have a steering arm. Just took some scrap two inch that I had, used a square, make sure we bring it up to 90 degrees. Not that that really matters, but uh, it's perfectly about standing height for me to just hang my arm down on my side and it reaches right there. So now we can drive it around. I also capped the end off there to keep that nice and strong. Everything is just tacked at this point, make sure it all works right, and then we'll take it back apart. So next, we're gonna start tackling those drive sprockets. Let's get this thing underway. Badlands 2000 winch from your local Chinese Emporium. And I have this sprocket, this is the second one I bought, but the idea of this sprocket very closely matches the drum on the winch. So unfortunately, aluminum, steel, not gonna happen. So we're either gonna have to bolt it through the side or, if I had a way to cut a keyway, I would key that in right there and use the little grub screws, but uh, that's not gonna happen. So we're going to pull the handle off the winch, unbolt this from the body, get that drum off, and see what we can do. Let's get at it. is ready that was actually pretty much easier than i expected so handle off roll pin out two four millimeter hex on the bottom slide it out and then cut the aluminum end off the spool over here fortunately for me this sprocket has two full depth threaded set screws one there and one right there and so i actually took one threaded it into the hole in the drum that held the cable, and I just tightened the other one. So I will be honest, I do not know if that is gonna hold. We may have to do something a little bit more serious in the future. But I think we're gonna try that for now. The other thing I ran into, this sprocket touched the case. So I had to do a little bit of a precision relief cut there so that the sprocket can still rotate. Now, in the orientation I have it, chain's not gonna be down there too often. So um, I may have to relieve that a little bit more, but I think we're gonna be okay from a chain perspective. So uh, that's what my winch looks like. Go ahead and lock it in, and we'll put it back on and see how we're doing. <laughs> Now we are working on the drive hub. Now this is the part I had to do the most backyard engineering on. I took the wheel, which is actually two piece, took it off, got four nice long bolts. So I'm actually gonna use the sandwiching of the wheel, bolt it together with a nut, and then I'm gonna bolt it to this. So I uh, did some measuring, got that 5 8 hole right in the middle. Definitely get a 5 8 drill bit, don't try to hog it out or anything. Got my four holes, we will cut this. I'll bolt the wheel together, bolt it to this, slide it on the axle so it's center, weld this to the axle, and then I can take the axle, uh, uh, the wheel off the axle anytime I want. And there is the completed hub. I did replace these four bolts. Don't forget to take the air out of the tire before you do take it apart, which I also did. Those nice, uh, I believe they're two and a half inch bolts come through, come right into my hub, which is bored out to five eighths. And if I take it and slide it right over the axle, the wheel will keep it centered. And what I'm gonna do is get it nice and centered and weld a bead right there to that hub. And I can take these nuts off and pull the wheel off if I need to, uh, change it flat, do whatever I need to do, put bigger tires on it, and that should work. Currently, we're gonna set it up in one wheel drive to make turning a little easier. 
If it's not sufficient, uh, we may go to two wheel drive or two motors or something like that. So let's burn it on. <laughs> All right, now it's time to work on the axle side. This adapter perfectly fits this sprocket. I will put a link to this below. I wish it could bolt on, but it doesn't. I'm gonna weld this on, I'm gonna get on the axle and weld that on, and then I'll have a little bit of lateral play on the axle. Winch is done, spins nicely. Plenty of room for the chain on the back side. So weld this, pop it on the axle, get everything lined up. Here's a finished look on some of the welds on that center sprocket, ignore that part. This is a nice spot right there. All right, we are in final mock-up. We have our driven wheel attached on this side, pinched in here with a little pinch bolt on the pillow block. We have our sprocket waiting to be aligned and welded, going through the pillow block on this side, and then I've got two of these little collars just kind of holding the dummy wheel. So it should roll freely, making sure that we've got clearance for those drive bolts on the uh, frame here. So we're gonna get a straight edge, line up that sprocket, and uh, make sure that it's good to go. Now, please note, I've not slotted these for any adjustment here. There's no adjustment on the wind side, and there's no adjustment here. We're gonna see how the chain does. If I need to get a half link or whatever, I can do that, but I think we're gonna be in good shape. Test coming soon. Rockets on, it is relatively straight. We're not talking about going high speed here, so I think it is gonna be sufficient for what I need. Throw the battery in, put a little chain on, see if we can make it move. Success, great test. Now we need to blow it apart, final weld, finish weld, grind it, paint it, and then we'll give it a test. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is uh, how we have that spline or how we have those uh, little grub screws attached to the drum of the winch. Hopefully that will hold, but only time will tell. Let's get it put back together once we get it painted and then we'll give it a test with the trailer. All right, here we go. It is ready for final welding. We got our sprockets installed. We got our drive hub made down here. I'm gonna add a little bit of a plate underneath the hitch just to tie these together and make that a little bit beefier. And uh, it's time to finish weld it. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing finished welded and get it tried out. Finish welding is done. The trailer is hooked up and it's holding weight. Let's see if it moves. All right, so it is moving. I got the trailer all the way up to there, 
but uh, it kind of wants to pop a wheelie and it kind of wants to spin the tire. So we may have to figure out how to get a little bit more weight on the trailer mover. We may actually have to stack some weight on it, but for now, successful first test. We'll keep at it. All right, here's what we've run into here. The one wheel drive doesn't seem to be cutting it. And after some consultation with higher powers, it looks like my uh, the direction of force on the wheels isn't really working. I'll show you what I mean. Go back the other way. Pulls great. So version 1.0, moderate to mild success. This too high, the motor needs to probably flip and we need to change from one wheel drive to two wheel drive. So I'm gonna try and knock out some of those changes real quick here and then we'll look at our second version. Shut up and sit down. I have lowered the hitch mount two inches and you can see I've flipped the winch around. For some reason this winch had a different speed forward and reverse. I don't know if it's a resistor in the handle. I don't know what it is, but I got two holes. I can, I can go back and forth either way I want. But this should give me a slower speed in this direction, which is primarily what I need to do. So I also went ahead and made a drive axle for this side. So let's go give it a shot. Okay. Everything's hooked up. We're gonna try just a simple straight push and then we'll start uh, seeing if we can get it across the grass. Here we go. Much better. All right, so it got over a bump today that it couldn't do it before. So I'm gonna try to get some angle and we'll try and get across the grass. I'll turn on the time-lapse, let's go. All right, sorry it's a little dark here, but this is right about where we started having problems last time. Right there is where the dolly got stuck. So I'm assisting it a little. But we're going to see if we can get over this bump and around to its final spot. Success. We got our trailer mover working. Two wheel drive made a difference and some of the angle changes in the chain made a difference switching that around to the other side to the slow speed on the winch. Still kind of need a half link to take up some slack in the chain, but the trailer is in place, it's out of the driveway and frees us up for some additional things to come. As always, stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage right here on YouTube and in between episodes at Barefoot Garage Jacks on Instagram. See you guys.